Welcome to SchoolNet's webinar series of past finalists and winners in Microsoft's Partners in Learning Forum in South Africa. I am Fiona Beale and I am hosting this webinar. I would like to introduce you to Peter DeLau, who came third in the world with his project on biodiversity. Over to you, Peter. Okay, hello, am I on now? Okay, great. Um, I'm going to, I presume we have to stop quite soon, so I'm going to try and do this as quick as possible, like we had to do it when we did it for the actual presentation. So I'm just going to zip into it here. Um, and uh, just to say this was grade 8, and um, I was teaching IT across the curriculum, but I was also teaching a bit of English. Um, and then I just grabbed the idea for natural science as well. Um, our school is, is situated in a very beautiful estate, and um, given that it was the International Year of Biodiversity in 2010, it seemed like a good idea to try and put all of that together um, as a sort of biodiversity project. Um, so it, it's always, you know, the kids these days trying to get them interested in nature and the great outdoors and all that is quite difficult. So this was of an aim to, to get them to see the world around them a bit more. Um, I wanted to, to uh, also be a little bit cognizant of what Jonathan Janssen was saying. That, you know, he was looking at OBE and saying that it was sort of a disaster because it was all these highbrow constructivist people trying to get kids doing projects and all that instead of them just teaching them what they needed to know. So that sort of made me stop in my tracks a bit and I thought, well, okay, need to have some sort of serious stuff in here as well, not just having fun with projects all the time. Um, oops, sorry, I clicked the wrong thing there. Um, so, okay, we had to have a bit of natural science, um, learning outcomes, and uh, and then there were also some English ones, I think I've got them on that. Yeah, there's English. Um, these zany pictures on the slides, these are part of what was created by the kids in the project, so you'll see a bit later on where that comes in. Um, so the project was really just starting off with some definitions, getting them to look for definitions and think up their own definitions, importantly, um, and then do some thinking about what, what biodiversity is, about different biomes, um, working collaboratively using a spreadsheet, um, then expressing their understanding of that through, through a creativity project um, using Photoshop, and that was sort of designing their creature, and then writing a short story which um, involved them and their creature in some sort of fantasy space. Um, the whole project took place inside uh, sort of a shell in Moodle. Moodle is our learning management system which we use, and here you can see um, the view that the, that the boys had of the project. So everything they needed for the project was here. Um, all the resources, um, the space to hand in their different assignments, and um, instructions and so on. So everything was there that they needed. Um, okay, so the first task was just looking for definitions, and um, this is maybe part of the Jonathan Janssen thing, learning how to do a search. Um, and um, Learning that you don't just take the first one. Oops, where we got to now? Another no, jump. There. You don't just take the first definition you come across, but you actually work with a few and then make up your own. So I don't want it necessarily to sound all scientific and important, but I want it to sound like you actually know what you're talking about. So, um, but we also got them working with referencing, um, using the referencing tools in Word while they were doing that. Here's just a shot of, of how you manage sources for an academic thing. So we wanted the kids from the very start to be um, working as proper academics, even if in a simple way, so that they get these tools um, mastered early on and know that it's important to use them to, to acknowledge the work, to, to acknowledge your sources and do it properly. Um, used a, an Intel online thinking tool just to get them thinking about different um, living spaces, I suppose, different areas of the globe and what you might want. Um, and the nice thing about this tool is that it is a collaborative tool in that you, once you've done your own ranking of these items, 
uh, you can then see what other people have, have ranked them as. Um, it's also good in that it promotes thinking in that you have to put in um, your, uh, your justification for that ranking. So it's not just a random thing, you have to actually say what you think. Um, Okay, then uh, that, uh, they had a whole bunch of different online sources which they could use. So depending on what tickled their fancy in terms of their learning style, they could take this one was sort of a bit more serious and visual. This was kind of fun, silly kind of thing. Uh, and there were others as well. So they could, they could use the, the online resources. Their task was just to become expert in biome so that they knew what they were talking about. Um, for the second part of this task, which was working in an online spreadsheet uh, together with others in their group. So they first had to think about what their criteria were for um, a biome, what would make an excellent biome. So they had to think of, um, you know, would it be the temperature, would it be the vegetation, what would it be that, that would be relevant to look at. And then as a group, they had to fill in their spreadsheet. So it was really fun to watch this happening with the different cells of the spreadsheet getting filled in. Um, and to watch them doing that collaboratively using an, an exciting online tool. Um, and then at the end of it, they had to, to rank them in some way. So they had to, uh, some of the groups really went uh, overboard and did a whole um, scoring system and based their ranking on that. Others just sort of ranked them on what they discussed. Um, Okay, then they were headed off to Photoshop to, to create their biome and to create a creature to live in that biome. So the whole concept here is about adaptation and how creatures could actually live, uh, live in a particular space and be perfectly suited to it. So um, they were using Photoshop and it was their very first time for using Photoshop. It was also my first time using Photoshop, so it was quite a, quite a challenge for all of us. And um, for me, the principle here is that you, that it, Photoshop is, is the tool of choice professionally. So I'd rather have them using that even in a very, in a very rudimentary way and building up their skills where there's a huge ceiling um, rather than using something very simplistic, which they might manage to do easily, but there's no growth potential in it. So I thought, check them in, let them figure it out the hard way, and they did amazingly. So part of the learning here was that um, you don't have to have somebody telling you exactly what to do. And in fact, maybe you learn more by not having someone saying, click here, click there, do the next thing, do the next thing. Because they, they actually, many of them learned different things. They taught each other different things. So um, they, they actually did amazingly well in a very difficult program. Um, so they created their biome, and they created their creature living in the biome, and they learned quite a lot of Photoshop in the process, and so did I. And the last step was for them to now sort of imagine this biome that they created and to sort of have this the story of the game as it were like now they first person adventure hero in this biome context that they've created and fighting off this uh, wild creature that they've created and um, making their way through this this uh, hostile world that they created and um, the, the, the writing was, was brilliant. Um, some, some did it as a diary and so on. The one diary ended rather sadly with, I don't think I'm going to make it out, dot, dot, dot. And that was the last entry in the diary. Um, so I think that's just an overview of it. What I was trying to achieve was some of these 21st century skills, all the time trying to say, what's the thinking involved here? How can this task actually make the kids think? Um, a bit of group work, but I don't think I wanted all of it to be group work because I think that can be frustrating for some kids. Um, obviously, a lot of technology used in it, and to try and blend um, various sort of modes. So I think learning styles and differentiation is more about giving the kids different ways to express themselves rather than the teacher having to um, perform in different modes for the kids. So uh, there was a more artistic thing. There was more scientific things, etc. So different modes would be supported for the kids in doing their tasks. Um, okay, so just some things that they learned along the way about not plagiarizing, referencing, um, trying to make it motivated and fun by sort of basing it on things that they would be thinking about, like computer games and that. Um, 
trying to teach them that learning is really about yourself figuring out what you need to do to solve a particular problem rather than sitting dumbly while somebody tells you what to do. Um, and I've spoken about multiple intelligences and all that. Um, okay, so the, the, the ICT tools were very important for it, but in fact, to some extent, they weren't actually the main point of it. So I think that's, it's a difficult balance to get with these projects, is you want to have, you want it sort of dependent on ICT, but you also want it not dependent on ICT. You need to, you know, the, the idea itself needs to work even in a world without technology, but obviously you use the technology as much as possible to make it really work. Um, okay, I'm just, unfortunately I found out after this particular picture of the, the cat with the shark's jaw was stolen from somewhere else. Um, so that wasn't so good. Um, so in terms of, of being a change agent, um, uh, I think it, it taught the kids a bit about uh, that the teaching can happen in a different sort of way, where they're at the center of things rather than the teacher. Um, and, um, yeah, and that it's working collaboratively about like responsibility and so on. Um, and the other people that I worked with, other colleagues I worked with through the project also learned some new skills and things along the way. Um, yeah, not, not all the creatures ended up looking stunning like this poor lion. Um, but uh, I think the project worked quite well. Problems we had was with bandwidth. Um, and, you know, many of these online tools require some sort of registration and all that sort of stuff. So that's a bit of, of logistics that just you have to allow time for. Um, I did it in two cycles because I had to do half the grade, then half the grade afterwards. So it did give me a chance to, to think about how I was doing it as I went along. So it, it sort of had a built-in reflection to it, which was quite positive. Um, and I would I would quite happily do the project again as is, that, but um, I think if I were to do it again, I would probably work the biology department into it a bit more, life sciences rather, and um, you know they might want to do it slightly differently. So I'd be happy to change in accordance with what they wanted. Um, because, uh, yeah, so that's I think I'll just end it off there with that nice picture of the the chi eagle. Okay, um, shall I hand the mic back to Fiona then? Or does somebody... Ah, thank you so much, Peter. That was fantastic. A really great project, really. Um, I love the way you broke it into the tasks. It looked so simple when you do that, task by task, and all the different tools that you used. I'm so enjoying this because now I get to actually hear your projects like really hear them if you know what I mean uh, and as everyone's been commenting on your pedagogy and the true hair it just is so excellent when you said that about Photoshop it reminded me of the first time I did Google Earth with the kids and I, I hadn't actually practiced it myself so I got the grade sevens to all just practice with it first and then they could come to the computer my computer and teach the others what they'd learned and that's how I learned Google Earth and that showed me that kids are so advanced you know they, they really they work it out so well. That was Peter DeLau from Hilton College. Thank you very much Peter for sharing your superb project on biodiversity with us. Good night everyone.